Yo, what's up? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Wednesday, September 15th, 2021. I'm one of your hosts, Blessing, Addy Oye Jr. Joining me is twitch.tv slash Andy Cortez. What up, gamers around the world? Andy, how's it going? I'm doing fantastic. We just talked about what if. What just like if? we always do on Wednesdays on youtube.com slash kind of funny. How was it? How was the episode? Was it good? I'm, I'm, it's kind of losing me, Bless. I'll be real with you. It's kind of losing really? me. The whole really? series. Honestly, the MCU comic book movies. I mean, oh, you think enough. you think we finally hit the point? They're just like it's too much <laughs> they're, they're played out, guys. They're Fatigue. played out. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, we did I hear it. people. Like, I, hear, great. I hear people are pretty bored of that Shang Chi movie that just came out. <laughs> that was a real good movie. Yeah, yeah. God, I've gone back to twice to see it. It's... I want to go back a third time. Honestly, like, I if you really go back go a third back time, I'm again. down because I really want to oh. rewatch that shit. It's so Terry, goddamn good. Uh, yeah, you know I'm always down to party. I'm always down to party. I, what if we run the theater again? Do you think we can make Ooh, that happen? No, nah, see, that's too many. Like, that's going to be too expensive. A lot that's of moving right there. A lot of moving pieces right there, boss. Andy, how's that death loop going? Because I saw you were playing last night. Uh, Yesterday, I didn't play any of it at all. Oh, or maybe I'm thinking um, two nights ago then. Two nights ago, I, yeah, two nights ago, I started it and then I played more after my stream. Mm. And uh, I'm digging it. Yesterday, I really wanted to play it. Uh, but my priority was putting out this TikTok of me and WWE superstar Xavier Woods hash, uh, slash Austin Creed. We did a little Super Mario Bros. cover, and that took my whole day. That took, like, straight up when the workday ended at 5 p.m., I worked on that until, like, 2 in the morning last night. It was just nonstop. That's awesome. That was Can my main priority up? last night. Because I saw, I've seen that floating on the timeline, but I've not gotten the chance to check it out yet. Because, of course, I'm, I'm out here putting together KFGD, which takes up my 8 a.m. all the way up to my 10 a.m. And so I have no no time to do anything else, aside from, like, make a Starbucks tri uh, trip to pick up this iced coffee. That is giving me the coffee jitters. I still haven't figured out a way to defeat the coffee jitters. I, it's either I, like I get the, the coffee, coffee jitters, jitters or I'm just dead in the morning. I think the coffee jitters are good. It just it's kind of tells you that you're alive. You're feeling it. It's in a similar yeah, but way where... I feel where... too strongly. I've well, been dealing maybe? with acne my whole life, Kevin. And uh -huh. whenever I use a medicine and it burns, it's like, oh, that's working. Mm -hmm. Oh, that benzoyl mm -hmm. peroxide's working in there. Yeah. Um, so I feel like the coffee juice is sort of a similar thing. Like, oh, all right, it's getting me going. Uh, Death Loop Bless is is going great. I I want to play more. I can't wait to get back to it. I am all I I am straight up like an hour or maybe two away from beating ghost of Tsushima, so i want to do that first Ooh. can I you're right like you're in the you're loop. in a great place right now bouncing bouncing from ghost of Tsushima into death loop because those are two banger ass games a lot of lot a lot of good shit happening in death loop and i'm really digging it and once you start get getting a hold of the systems and kind of figuring out everything about it uh and i know that there's still so much more to discover it's exciting it's just a great time Hell yeah. Now, Kevin's brought up the TikTok that Andy was talking about, where it's Andy and Austin Creed doing a, what was it, a Mario World cover? Yeah, I, I had wanted to just, you know, do guitar covers and stuff on TikTok. And I saw Austin had been playing bass and posting a lot of videos. So I hit him up and he, his first response, I'm like, hey, do you want to do a Mario cover? And he's like, hell yeah, I just bought this costume on Amazon for the video. And he bought uh, a Luigi costume to dress up. So I was like, shit, I guess I got to buy a Mario costume now. And uh, this I'm sorry, is he bought a what? He bought the Luigi costume. Oh, okay. I thought you, you were jokingly saying his name, name wrong. <laughs> I misheard. Oh, no, no, Luigi. Kev, go ahead and press play, because I, I want to hear this. And also, people, I saw somebody in chat say DMCA. If Mario World DMCA's us, then whatever. Like, you know, I don't think Nintendo cares that much. Oh, this is hot. That groove and bass. You this know? is hot. And it gets really groovy once the midpoint hits and you get the harmonies. The, when the song changes up, you know, when it's not just repeating. That is fantastic. Can Bravo, you fast everybody, forward to this? Go over to what's your TikTok at the, the Andy Cortez. The Andy Cortez, yeah. Yeah, go over there. Give him the watch. Give him the click. Give him the view. Give him the like. Let's blow up this TikTok because this is hot. This is great. This is yeah, great content. Austin Creed killed it. Uh, I had to... It was one of those things, Bless, where there was a lot of iterations, and I finally thought I had the final one. I was like, all right, let me watch the draft on my phone. And I was like, I can't hear any bass because no, phones okay. just don't do bass well. <laughs> so no. I had to like add a lot of mid tones to Austin's bass to make it kind of sound more more twangy as opposed to just like low, uh, low hits, you know. Now, Andy, hear me out. All right. Send me the raw files to that. Let me add some drums to it. Let me, let me add some drums to it because I feel like we can lo-fi that. Oh, this, this, shit, this shit loops. 
Like this oh. shit. That TikTok <laughs> loops. Bless. You know Hell saying? yeah. Yeah. Now going back to, I want to go back to two things, right? One, somebody earlier in chat, I'm sorry because I didn't catch the name. Somebody was like, bless, just eat breakfast before you drink the coffee. That'll get rid of the coffee jitters. I have this thing. I, I know I know other people have this too, where I can't eat in the morning. Like my body just doesn't want to consume food when I first wake up. And so like I've tried it a billion times where I sit down, I try to have some kind of breakfast. I, ha I try to have like Vomit. the sausage yeah. biscuit from McDonald's or I try to make myself breakfast. And like before 10 a.m., my body's just like, no, you're not eating. And I don't like I don't know what that stems from. I'm sure there's some scientific reason behind it. I know Kevin's here, right? Kevin, the scientist. Like, Have you heard of this, Kevin? Are you able to diagnose me right now? Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I was having a conversation with my wife. What's uh, what do you, what do you, what's he, the problem? He can't eat. I can't eat before like the, the before like 10 a.m. What My happens? Are you just not eat. hungry or? I'm not hungry. And like it, 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 any other time of the day, I, even if I'm not hungry, I can just make myself eat. Right. But like mm -hmm. in the morning, legitimately kind of disgusts me to want to to want to eat food. Really? Before do, 10 do you ever yeah. have like My body uh, just rejects it? Do you ever have any sort of stomach pain associated beforehand? No, no. It's just like a normal thing where like I, yeah, I, I'll I look mean, at well, so, food well, and be like, no, are I'm you good. Eat, like when are you eating? When's your last meal in the day? Oh, that's a good question. Like, are that's you a eating question. a meal at two a.m.? <laughs> Not at two a.m. No, probably like at like seven. Like you're seven. Oh, yeah, that's that's good. You're maybe good. That's nine. A healthy break. I mean, it's your body. I really. What, I think what you should try to do is drink less coffee. I know that I've tried seems that. weird. I've, yeah, and that's I, still you still get the jitters. No, I don't. Well, when I don't drink coffee, I don't have the jitters, but I'm just too tired to function. But like, I if, need the coffee so I can drink, like get that. What if boost? you only drink three quarters of the the cup? Less caffeine in there. Hmm. I like this. Or try a darker roast right now. That'll have less. Uh, and are you going to McDonald's still? Uh, this this time I went to Starbucks. Half the time I go okay. to McDonald's. The other half I go to Starbucks. If you try something with a darker roast that has less caffeine, uh, someone in the chat says half calf. That's totally an half option. And, yeah, and that, okay. like you'll get caffeine, but it won't be too much because that's that's what's happening. You're, you're Will your body even allow that though? Bless. Will your body even? It wouldn't know because at this. Know. You at this point, I, levels. I have mentioned this several times that I am just so desensitized to any sort of energy drink or crazy uh, black roast or anything like that, that when I hear the concept of people like adults my age saying, oh, dang, it's 11 p.m. What am I doing drinking this soda? I'm just like, dude, I wish a soda could get me jacked up. But like mm. there's zero shot that a normal beverage of some, you know, Coca-Cola is going to get me jacked up at 11 p.m. I need the good stuff. And so I don't know about this half-calf stuff. I feel like maybe you're, you might be desensitized at this point, Bless. We'll see. I can mess around with the levels because, mm. like, I think th that is a good point that I don't have to drink the full cup. But even now, I've only drank a half a cup, and I already have the jitters, right? Like, you know, I, I, I drink some any push coffee. <sighs> push-ups might be the thing, right? I drink the coffee. I do push-ups for KFGD. I get on the, I get on the mic. Right for that, I'm sweating, but I don't have the jitters as much. Yeah. That might be the way to do it. Kev, mm -hmm. I'm sending you to ask, I'm sending a, a video to assets right now because that was the first thing, right? I wanted I wanted to go back to the coffee conversation. Good. Uh, but secondly, on the topic of Death Loop, last night I was playing Death Loop and I was playing it on stream, and I've not gotten to do the Juliana stuff as much uh, as I wanted to. But last night I sat down and for a couple hours I just I just did a session straight of just Juliana invasions. Which for those who don't know, right, like. When you boot up Death Loop, it gives you two options. You can break the loop, which is you playing as Cole and you're going through the main campaign trying to take out all the visionaries. Or you can play as Juliana, which is the online mode where you can invade other people's games and get in there and take people take people out, right? It's Dark Souls style invasions. And so like I was playing last night, and let me tell you, I am in love with the Juliana mode. Uh, last night we had a fun thing where Jeff Grubb, of course, you know Jeff Grubb from Games Beat. I've heard of him, he, yeah. Yeah, some people have heard of him. Uh, he hit me up and he was like, hey, man, Mike Minotti, my coworker, is on right now. And I was like, oh, are we going to take out Mike Minotti? Do we want to go after Mike Minotti? And so I added him on, on PSN. I invaded his game a few times. And the first time I invaded his game, let me tell you, it was fucking, it was hunting season, Andy. Oh, <laughs> it was yeah? like straight up Elmer Fudd, Bugs Bunny. Like he was the <laughs> rabbit. You know, that's a bad example because usually Bugs Bunny gets gets the upper hand Hunting on uh, Elmer it, Fudd, yeah. which he did later on. But in this first session, when I tell you, Andy, I had him dead to rights. Kevin, do you have do you have the video? And we can scroll through it. We don't have to like watch the whole thing. This is like a forty second thing. Wait, I'm sorry. Really, where, I just need where, like the last the video. 
Asset. It's in assets in Slack. I, it, I just need like the last I'll pull it up. 20 I'll pull seconds. It up. Sorry, sorry. That, Give me two seconds. That's I love this concept because as soon as I'm when I'm streaming this game, the first aid comes out. He hits see, Jeff Grubb in chat. That should be it. Yeah, it's so, he's so fucked because he's so, gonna try. Okay, yep. So yeah, go back like and 10, once seconds, he starts, 10 seconds. Yep. Right there, right? So like Okay, so he's right there. Mike is oh, on one fucked. life. He is I so see him screwed. come in the room. <laughs> and I'm like, so I have him dead dressed because I know exactly what he's gonna do. Once he starts, yep. Boom, run up on him. Just shotguns to the torso, and he's done. It's easy. Download oh, yeah, complete. Yep, yep, that's it. I've never felt that's so much. It. Just like, oh, I'm good so energy. sorry, Mike Minotti. <laughs> I'm, I'm so sorry, Mike Minotti. Video dude. game. Oh. I've never felt so calculated. Oh, I'm so, so sorry. Fucking, I had to do... like, I got you, man. I got you. The what download was completed like. right there. That's so awesome. What, the, yeah, when shit. I was streaming initially, uh, Jeff Grubbin was in my chat. Was like, hey, what's your PSN? I need to know for reasons. And I was like, oh, he wants to hop in here, but oh, I'm yeah. on PC. And he was like, all right, downloading it immediately. Uh, but I see Greg Miller wants to smoke as well. And it's like, Greg Miller, you're not on PC. Uh, you know, we got our own. I I don't need anybody invading me right now. Apparently, the game has a bunch of sh like shitty bugs because of the uh, the, the invasion? what's it called? The and the, not the anti cheat. Um, Wait, so, Andy, are the rumors true that you're scared to play Greg Miller? No, not at all. I've, I'll destroy Greg on PC. Uh, but the 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 PC yeah, it has DRM. Thank you, Joshy G and Chat. Um, the PC version has DRM that is fucking up the game, and people are getting really bad stutter stuttering issues in Deathloop on PC. I have not encountered that luckily, but it's the same DRM thing that we experienced with Resident Evil Eight, if you remember, or Village. Oh rather. yeah. Whenever we encountered uh, the you know those them baddies, the daughters. Whenever you would encounter them and all the bugs would fly around and you're the machine, I would drop down like 20 frames a second. That uh, that was a DRM issue as well. And they fixed that, luckily. And so that village doesn't, you know, chug anymore. But right now, Deathloop is having a lot of issues. And Bethesda saying and Bethesda and Arcane are saying that it is their top priority right now. Dang. To fix well, those fix problems. That. Hopefully they, f they fix that. Andy, we're 15 minutes into this show. We've barely started. So let's talk about a huge NVIDIA leak. Bluetooth coming to Nintendo Switch and more because this is Kind of Funny Games Daily. Each and every week at 10 a.m. live right here on Twitch.tv slash Kind of Funny Games. We run you through the nerdy news you need to know about. If you're watching live, you can correct us when we get stuff wrong by going to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong. If you don't want to watch live, you can watch later on YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games, roosterteeth.com, or you can listen later on podcast services around the globe by searching for kind of funny games daily to be a part of the show to patreon.com slash kind of funny games or bronze members or above get to write in and silver members or above get the show ad free with the exclusive daily post show housekeeping for you ps i love you xo xo is up right now and it's a jam-packed episode you're getting a solar ash preview from andy cortez a large breakdown of all of your unanswered questions from the playstation showcase uh you're getting twisted metal talk you're getting a new playstation playstation studio talk death loop talk and more uh, and that's available right now on youtube.com slash kind of funny games and on podcast services around the globe also a reminder, it's September on Twitch. Viewers from across the platform throughout the month can take advantage of 20% off subscriptions for first-time subscribers and for gifted subs. Your support means the world to us here at Kind of Funny, and right now you can take advantage of this deal and receive benefits like ad-free viewing, sub emotes, and more. Thank you to our Patreon producers, the Kind of Funny Destiny 2 PC clan, and Blackjack. Today we're brought to you by DoorDash and Canva, but I'll tell you about that later. For now, let's begin with what is, and forever will be, the Roper Report. Uh, it's time for some news. We have six stories today. Uh, Baker dozen. This uh, so Baker's dozen. What was the inspiration for what just happened just now? Um, apathy. Fair. No, that's fair. I mean, every yeah. every now and then, it really you gotta was. have a free I, pass. I, had to I gotta bring some some shit shows so that people enjoy the good ones. You know what I mean? It, yep. That's exactly how it goes. That's exactly how it goes. Andy, let's talk about story number one, which is a huge one. There was a big old NVIDIA GeForce Now leak. I am pulling from Chris Scolian at Video Games Chronicle, who helps breaks it down. Uh, in an article titled, NVIDIA confirms leaked GeForce Now list is real, but claims games are speculative. NVIDIA has played down a recent data mine that appeared to reveal a number of unannounced games this week, including a Steam version of God of War in Gear 6. In a blog post and accompanying video posted on Monday, developer Igor July doc documented how he was able to access the database for NVIDIA's streaming service. 
It included a list of titles compiled by SteamDB founder Pavel Jundik, uh, featuring unannounced games like Final Fantasy IX Remake, Bioshock RTX Remaster, Resident Evil 4 Remake, Halo 5 PC, Grand Theft Auto Trilogy Remasters, Crisis 4, Half-Life 2 Remastered, Injustice 3, and more. NVIDIA has since confirmed that the list is real and claimed that it was used for only internal testing and that the games listed don't necessarily exist. Quote, NVIDIA is aware of an unauthorized uh, published games list with both released and or speculative titles used only for internal tracking and testing, end quote, a company spokesperson told WCCF Tech. Quote, inclusion on the list is neither confirmation nor an announcement of any game. NVIDIA took immediate action to remove access to the list. No confidential game builds or personal information were exposed, end quote. The games listed on the GeForce Now database include... God of War, Returnal, and Demon's Souls for PC, GTA 3, Vice City, and San Andreas Remasters, Unannounced Xbox Projects via Codename, Fight for Middle Earth and Injustice 3 Gods Will Fall, Human Fall Flat 2, Total War 9, Helldivers 2, Halo 5 Guardians for PC, Crash Team Racing Nitro Fuel for PC, Bioshock 2022, Final Fantasy 7 Remake for PC, Bayonetta 3 for PC, Crisis 4, Kingdom Hearts 4. God, why? Ah, oh, fucking Jesus. <laughs> well, much of the list could have been made up of placeholder fourth titles. One blast? titles. Jesus. A fourth Kingdom Hearts, they got to stop them while they're, while they're ahead. Uh, placeholder titles and titles that may not actually see the light of day. VGC first reported last year that the Resident Evil 4 remake has been in development since 2018, while VGC sources have also corroborated reports that GTA remasters are in development. According to Windows Central, many of the, many of the Microsoft code names mentioned on the NVIDIA database are related to actual projects, some of which have already been announced, such as real games, uh, or been announced as real games, such as Playgrounds Fable Reboot. It also claims that GeForce Now has played a prominent role in game development throughout the COVID-19 pandemic, providing remote access in work from home environments, which could explain why work in progress titles would be listed on the service andy cortez this is possibly depending on how much of this is accurate which we can't this is a this is a huge grain of salt right situation right sure. depending on how much of this is accurate this could theoretically be the biggest video game leak of all time or it could be nvidia geforce now is fucking around and like you know none of this is real where do you stand on all this andy I'm going to go with this is 1 million percent real only because I want to believe in the hype and the excitement. And I think right now NVIDIA is absolutely terrified and you have to play damage control as much as possible. I think the fact that we, you know, that they're using like, oh, these are a lot of these are just like theoretical games, right? Like in theory, what if they remade Bioshock with like ray tracing and stuff? <laughs> like, I'll, like it's weird stuff like that, um, it, including the Microsoft code names that I think really makes it feel legitimized in a way that if you were to put Metal Gear Solid 6 on there, I would not really believe this list. Like, I, I don't know. There's certain titles that you could have put on the list that would have felt unbelievable, but a lot of these I feel like have some validity to them. Um, and the fact that, again, there are Xbox code names, uh, via, you know, projects via code name that were then kind of verified as, yes, these are kind of these code names are some things that have been announced already. I think those are kind of like the big clues that hint to, to this possibly being more real than fake. Yeah, this the list that we have here is a very interesting one to go through and parse out, and it's one of the ones where I almost want to go go uh, uh, title by title because there are things here where it's like, okay, GTA Three Vice City and San Andreas Remasters. We literally just got done reporting about that, right? Mm -hmm. Like that was something we've talked about a few weeks ago on this show, and we know that that exists in some form, and so that's an interesting one to see here and see that okay, now we have that being double corroborated, right? Like we have that the reinforcement that, oh, this thing exists. And not only is it being reported by these outlets, it's literally in, G in NVIDIA GeForce Now's uh, 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 list of titles here that they have in the database. But then you look at something like Kingdom Hearts 4, and I highly doubt that that is legitimate, at, le at least based on these GeForce Now things, right? Like I, 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 I'm sure Kingdom Hearts 4, to some extent, is being worked on. I'm sure it exists in the minds of developers and in the studios. But I don't think that that is in a place where it is 
imminent or in i don't think geforce now has the scoop on kingdom hearts 4 like i think i think it's a combination of hey we're making the this database is still filled with titles based on we know that this exists or we know that um uh developers are using geforce uh as a way to to, to assist in the development for this thing versus this is an idea of things that we think exist. It reminds me of that Walmart candle leak that we got a few uh, years ago before E3, where it was in that Walmart candle leak. I forget exactly what ended up being like, what was already announced versus what was, wasn't already announced. But I remember there being like Borderlands 3 and Rage 2 uh, and like Mario and Rabbit's Kingdom Battle. But then there are things like Splinter Cell, which ended up just not ever right. being announced, right? I think Forza Horizon 5 was in there too, but like that was just announced this year. It reminds me of that, where like companies do do this. Companies do have speculative speculative lists in the way that us talking about them on podcasts and us talking about, well, obviously this studio is probably working on this thing and this other studio is probably working on this thing. Retailers and companies like this do a similar thing, but of course they also have more scoops than we do because they are working more directly with these developers to actually get these things out and actually help these things get developed. And so like you know going through it god of war Re- returnal and demon souls for pc that makes sense given yeah. playstation's recent history of putting their exclusives out on pc god of war on pc feels like it's next up you know especially now that we have uncharted 4 and lost legacy coming to pc soon uh returnal if it and bloodborne i would have said no this is fake oh yeah exactly right they're like <laughs> bloodborne and be like no this whole thing throw this whole thing out in the trash yeah. <laughs> none of this is real returnal and demon souls i have a harder time like believing as a imminent thing like those feel like they're kind of years down the road because playstation kind of looks at their back catalog a little bit more when doing their pc ports but then you go on to i I just want to butt in and say like i think the what i want to keep harping on this these xbox code names because they already verified that one of them was fable and that's all great and good and that game's coming out but what are the other code names what what have they figured out a way to tie which games tied to certain code names are some code names still unknown. And that's sort of the thing that I'm kind of worrying about. But another thing that kind of tips me of like, Ooh, I don't know how real this is. And it's something that I've talked with snow Mike, Mike about host of the kind of funny X cast. Um, I keep asking for where's halo five on PC. And the answer that I keep getting from Mike is like, I don't think that's ever going to happen because of infinite coming out. And I don't know why you would have obviously money. Right. But having a team work hard and putting a port team and hiring a a whole squadron of like 20 people or whatever, or 50 people to port a video game to PC doesn't make a whole lot of sense when you have a game that's going to be kind of cannibalizing it in a couple of months. So that seems like a weirder choice uh, to have Halo 5 on PC. And I just wanted to point Mm. that out. I want to say one of the um, code names I believe is Gear Six. I don't know what the code name for Gear Six was, ah. but Gear Six was part of this whole leak. And so we have Got Gear it. Six, you have Fable, and then yeah, you have Halo Five for PC. Which for that, you know, take with that what you will, right? Like again, all of this is is grain of salt for the most part because yeah. we're working with a lot of speculative things. But code names is one of those things where it's like if you're making this list, if you're making this database. You're not making it with code names if you if you're speculating the actual thing, right? If you have code names, that means you know something about the actual development of the game. And so those are ones that I would take. Uh, those are those are those are the ones that I would hold as this is probably true, right? Gear Six is probably somewhat imminent, going to be Im- imminently announced, or at the very least, is being worked on actively based on this thing. Uh, uh, and I would hold the same thing for for uh, Halo Five as well, and Fable we already know about, and so that's not a surprise whatsoever. What is a bit of a surprise for me, though, is Injustice 3. Because when we look at uh, Netherrealm, it makes sense that they they have that back and forth, right? Mortal Kombat and Justice, they kind of have that ping pong. We just got Mortal Kombat 11 and Mortal Kombat Aftermath last year. which They announced mean, they were skipping, right? They didn't announce they were skipping, but that has, that has been the theory. Because when you look at the WB Games thing and how, like, okay, where, where are these studios going to be is... Uh, uh, NetherRealm going to be part of WB Games in the long in the long term future when there's so much chaos going going on with WB and their game studios. With that, I believe the reports have been that they're just going to go back to making another Mortal Kombat instead of doing Injustice, which could mean anything, right? That could mean that Injustice Three is being worked on, but they're just putting it on the back burner and still it still exists in some form. Could mean that hey, maybe they 
are actually working on Injustice 3 as opposed to Mortal Kombat next because they have found comfort in being able to make that and like not be too scared off by the stuff that's going on with WB Games. So that's an interesting one. Fight for Middle Earth is an interesting one. I love this. This is just a speculation show. Yeah. I'm here for it. This, uh, this is like my favorite type of kind, of kind of funny games daily. Human Fall Flat 2, I think is a funny one. Because like that, that putting exists. that on the list, putting that on the <laughs> I like that has the, to exist. The fact that that's there, kind of again, having that name there amongst all of these other sort of heavy hitters. Um, not to say Human Fall Flat isn't any of these titles, but you know what I mean. Like it, it doesn't have carry the weight that a God of War, Returnal, or Demon Souls on PC would have. Or um, so having Human Fall Flat two, a game that random. Yep. Again, it's it's Along like these with Hold Evers 2. Hold Evers 2 is another one exactly like that, where it's like, yeah, it's why would you have that there unless that, that exists so weird. for real? Now, 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 granted, we have seen that plenty of times with fake leaks over the years where you're getting the rumored stuff on leaks and then you're getting the weird shit that's like, why the fuck is this? Then there's no way that that could be here if that's real or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, we've seen that before, but um. Yeah, man, this is this yeah. is so. I mean, keep in mind, love, keep in mind, this. Nvidia Nvidia did say this list is real, but they yeah. are saying that none of these 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 titles are all speculative in their part, right? Which is just, still like a funny thing of why would you have Helldivers two as a speculative thing out of all the <laughs> titles you can pick? Helldivers, <laughs> yeah, Helldivers yeah. two and Human Fall Flat two, like why are those the the the, the ones? Um, but yeah, like, and then you get into Crisis four and Kingdom Hearts four, and it's like, all right, like, are, do those exist? Probably not, but who knows, right? Who knows. I mean, again, th these are like you mentioned earlier. They're these are projects that could have just been skeletons that have been abandoned or are in the works or have been kind of put to the side for a bit. You know that I don't think every game here will come out, but mm -hmm. I think you still have to do some sort of you know you have to do all the logistical bullshit in the back end <laughs> whenever you want your game to be a part of certain services or whatever. So I think. Maybe not all of these will actually come out and are real, but I do think that the the list, I think the list is very real. And these are games that at one point have exist or still exist. Yeah. Yeah. Before we move on, I do want to point out a couple of things, but like a few people in chat were like, well, Helldivers is a great game. Human Fall Flat is a great game. We're not saying they're not great games. No. Right? Both of those are great games. It's a but weird it's game the, to throw out. <laughs> it's, a, it's a weird game to throw in a list of, hey, these are speculative titles to, 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 um, you know, figure out what our front end is going to look like or like just titles to have in a database in that way. If these are based on speculation, these are based on, you know, just ha just ha having shit to work with in your database. Those are some random titles to speculate about. Right. So that's one. But then also um, I saw somebody else saying like Cage for Kingdom Hearts 4 is for sure in development. Yeah. But like how far out is Kingdom Hearts 4? You know, Kingdom Hearts 4, I'm sure is in development, but that's not a game that is imminent in a way where you would refer to that game by anything but a code name. You know, like they're not over there uh, being like Kingdom Hearts, Kingdom Hearts 4 is about to release in 2023. And so like, you know, we're in active, like we're actively in uh, uh, NVIDIA GeForce now referring to it as Kingdom Hearts 4. Like it, with how early that game probably is, that game is a code name. That game is early. That game is... Uh, that, that I feel like in in this spec in this list project of, confusing bullshit yeah know? and in and, and the in the way that you would refer, refer to it in a database in this way I think mm -hmm. that that would be more of a code name than anything that would be given the final final name of Kingdom Hearts for Kingdom but Hearts fans I'm just I'm just possible. I'm just poking you I'm just poking you I'm just fucking around I immediately saw some people in chat sucks. be like why are they making fun of Kingdom Hearts it's like I just like to make fun of it it's just a silly oh of game. course <laughs> it's of a course. silly game super convoluted. <laughs> Andy, let's make fun of another company. A company <laughs> named a company named Nintendo. Oh, Story let's get them WNDs two. in chat. Let's see them WNDs, baby. We got a WND update for you. Nintendo finally adds Bluetooth audio to the Nintendo Switch in a new software update. I am pulling from Mitchell Clark, Jay Peters, and Sean this Hollister at The Verge. <laughs> <laughs> Nintendo has surprised so announced dumb. that Bluetooth audio support has come to the, to the Switch through a software update. The ability, the ability to use Bluetooth headphones to listen to, to game audio has been a conspicuously missing feature since the console launched in 2017, so it's great to finally have it, though there are some limitations. <laughs> Okay. According to a Nintendo, of course there are limitations. According to a Nintendo support article, you'll be limited to using two wireless controllers. Just the, le got just the left one. <laughs> 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 you'll be limited to 
be using two wireless controllers if you got a Bluetooth headset attached. The system also won't support Bluetooth microphones, which isn't necessarily surprising given that Nintendo's own voice chat system relies on an app running on your phone. <laughs> Still, it's a bummer for people who play games with their own built-in voice chat abilities. According to the changelog, the update also adds some features to make wired internet more useful. The Switch will will be able to stay connected to the internet, even in sleep mode, if it's hardwired in, seemingly either through an adapter or the built-in LAN port on the up upcoming Nintendo Switch OLED dock. Nintendo says that this will help the console download content while it's asleep, and that this and that the feature will be on by default. Uh, before I throw it to you guys, I want to bring in a statement from Dean Labarca, who wrote into patreoncom slash games, just like you can, and says, "Hey, kind of funny crew." This morning, I woke to the news that the Switch is receiving an update for Bluetooth headphone support, meaning the Switch has been capable of this the entire time. Ain't that something, lol. Sorry, I thought I could maybe put this into a question, but I'm still a little bit too baffled. Hope everyone has a great day. Dean Labarca. It's so funny. This is the funniest thing of all time. And the thing that kind of strikes me as weird is that I see this pop up on my phone and I, I'm not even kind of surprised by it i mean i am right but the the idea that we are getting bluetooth four years after the console release i just kind of go yeah that sounds about right like the idea that this capability has been there the whole time and they are making use of it now because the amount of instagram um ads that i get the stuff that i'm getting kind of you know shopped at like oh buy this little blue bluetooth adapter i'm like oh that would be cool to have a bluetooth adapter on the switch unfortunately you know it never it never came with one and this is just like the weirdest thing of all time i i, I what else can this thing do that we don't know about yeah what else was? I, I mean maybe you can run netflix you know like what oh the, shit like wait, wait, what? How how the fuck do you pull this in an update? <laughs> Three like four years after this thing has been out is is really funny. And yeah, like, it's I'd, like those... to, I'd like to imagine unless it's some engineers that are like playing. They're like, shit, we didn't. Did, do we ever push that Bluetooth? Update? Did we ever turn this on? <laughs> that was a day three thing back in 2017. You never pushed it. Like, what the fuck? It's like, oh, it's shit. So bizarre. I, see, I like to imagine it's the opposite where it's like, all right, look, we never put the Bluetooth in there. And someone just figured out how to make like the controller Bluetooth send out the right kind of signal so that they can hear it. Some dude's like pet project for the last two years. Some hacker. Yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. It's just That's funny so because weird. there there have been so many um like articles written and i we probably given the suggestion to you here where we're like yo if you want if you want to market the oled if you want to market the switch pro say that it has bluetooth right make it a whole thing that could be a selling point people would buy this thing for bluetooth the fact that just on a random twitter post last night nintendo was like by the way we added bluetooth into the switch you already have is 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 it's really funny and it goes to show you that nintendo is capable of anything <laughs> and it's not surprising at all also again like it's just it's so on brand for them to do this Four goddamn years that the an Oli two Olympics have gone by since the last <laughs> fucking uh, the, the last goddamn update. It's so bizarre. That's so hilarious to me. Okay. Great job, Nintendo. Never you never cease to amaze me. You never cease to amaze me, Andy. Before we get into the next news story, I want to remind everybody that you can go to patreon.com slash kind of funny games where you can get the show ad free. And speaking of ads, this wait, no, I was I was about to go, I was about to read the ad myself as if we still do that. Let us tell you about our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by HBO Max. If you're here, you probably love video games, but sometimes we have to face the cold hard truth. We can't game all the time. Sometimes we gotta kick back and watch some movies and some TV too. So it's a good thing HBO Max is here to save the day with all of your favorite DC content. HBO Max has an expansive superhero collection to feed your fandom. Greg Miller is stoked, of course. They've got Wonder Woman, they got Justice League, Stargirl, Batwoman, HBO, Shazam, Suicide Squad, the list goes on, of course. Plus the streaming platform lets you download your favorite titles and take them with you on the go. All the bingeable collections handpicked by humans, not robots. Personally, I've been enjoying a whole bunch of different things uh, over on HBO. I love all the day and date releases. We know we got The Matrix now coming out in December. That's really exciting to look forward to. We got Malignant. I'm about to watch that this weekend. Check out some of the best superhero content and so much more only on HBO Max. Get streaming today by going to hbom.ax slash kindoffunnydc. That's hbom.ax slash 
Kinda Funny DC. Next up, shout out to Rooster Teeth's Last Laugh Season 2. I was a huge fan of Season 1, uh, mainly because my boy Alfredo was in it. But Season 2, can't wait for it. Here's the whole pitch for it. Do not laugh. It's part game show, part social experiment, 100% evil laugh challenge, spectacular. Last Laugh returns for a second season with 12 contestants gathered for six hours to see who literally laughs last. If they laugh, smile, or smirk, they're eliminated and prevented from dethroning Season 1 champion the homie blaine gibson uh the host of the show jeff ramsey and elise willem so that's super awesome they have a new collection of surprises but will they be enough to break the contestants we'll have to find out uh last laugh season two debuts september 9th on rooster teeth but you can catch up on all of season one right now story number three next year's call of duty game is modern warfare 2 this is andy robinson at video games chronicle Next year's Call of Duty game will be a sequel to 2019's Modern Warfare. That's according to credited insider Tom Henderson and matches what VGC has heard from its own sources. Quote, it looks like Call of Duty 2022 is codenamed Project Cortez, uh, Henderson tweeted on Monday. Did I, did I, that's funny because like I pulled that, read it, and didn't even think about the fact that I got Andy Cortez on the show, right? It all yeah. comes together. Call of Duty mm -hmm. fan. I mean, yeah, they've seen, my, they've seen my highlight reels, bless, you know. They're like, oh, yeah, we got to name, we gotta to name this next team after him. Yeah. It's a uh, quote. It's expected to be a sequel to Modern Warfare 2019. End quote. Project Cortez first appeared in a data mined list of GeForce Now uh, games this week with Infinity Ward listed as developer. According to people with knowledge of Activision's plans, Modern Warfare sequel will include a campaign involving U.S. Special Forces fighting a covert war against Colombian drug cartels. In a possible link to Modern Warfare 2's alleged codename, this is also the premise to the 1994 Harrison Ford movie Clear and Present Danger, uh, whose main villain is the character Colonel Felix Cortez. Andy, does Modern Warfare 2 surprise you at all? No, God, no. I mean, they're going to keep making these every two years or whatever. They're going to keep alternating cycles. Man, the sky's about to be so goddamn yellow and orange in this. Like oh, the, the, you already they're know. Gonna, yeah. They're going to go to, yeah, they're wow, going to go to Colombia. It was like yesterday, right? Like, you already <laughs> That's so true. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the sky's going to look so goddamn yellow. Um, I, I, I'm not surprised by this at all. I don't know why anybody would be. Um, it's funny when you mentioned the description of the 1994 Harrison Ford movie. For some reason, I was like, I thought he was the president in that movie. But that's the other one, Kevin. What's the movie where Harrison Ford was the president uh, in the airplane? Uh, Get off of my plane. What's that called? Oof. Yeah, I'm right there on a with plane. You. With no, Samuel that's not Jackson. it. Oh, no, oh but I'm also thinking Air of The Force Fugitive. That's another one. Air Force, Air Force, Force One. I, I was thinking of The Fugitive. Uh, see the, not chat the, the chat got there like right after me, losers. Great job, Chad. Great enough. job. Uh, I'm not surprised by this at all. I it'll probably be another really neat bombastic title like their 2019 Modern Warfare was. Um, I yeah I, I don't know what what else can you say about Call of Duty? It's coming out. Yeah, like this is I, I, I imagine that this is a surprise to to no one, right? Like there's yeah. always the shot that Infinity War is going to do something that's not Modern Warfare, right? Like modern, the last Modern Warfare was was a reboot. And so, like, do you make another game that's called Modern Warfare 2? You know, I think there's always that question. But the answer to that question seems to be, yeah, why not? <laughs> right? It's still going to sell. People are going to understand what it is. And, and is this going to change the way that Infinity Ward and Activision and Raven and everybody else who's working on Call of Duty, is this going to change the way that they work with Warzone? And how do they tie that in? Um, I think they really need to figure out a way to make these events more exciting and more intuitive and more Fortnite. Cause so far it's it seems like it's more and more disappointing <laughs> every time there's a new update to kind of hint at whatever the future is. Um, and there's a lot of promise going into these big events and they enter, they never end up being that great. So uh, I don't know. I, uh, all the rumors that I've heard bless is that like black ops, was supposed to introduce Blackout 2. Mm -hmm. um, and Warzone was supposed to stay with the other uh, franchise, with Modern yeah. Warfare. And they were going to alternate, but Warzone was so big that they just said, fuck it, let's just keep you know, having each franchise feed into Warzone or whatever and have that being sort of the main central point of monetization. And I that, that just seems like such a pain in the ass to deal with all these different studios who may have different ideas for what the future of the franchise should be. 
Yeah, um, they're going to keep pumping these bad boys out, though. It's similar to the conversation we had on PS Love You about like Marvel games and trying to create a universe and how nice it is that just in- Insomniac now has Spider Man and Wolverine that they can play around with. And if they wanted to make those things communicate and cross over, they can do that without having to reach out to any other developer. But the reason why there's not a wide MCU style Marvel universe for Marvel games is that like Insomniac doesn't want to talk to Crystal Dynamics and they don't want to talk to Team Ninja, who's doing Marvel's Ultimate Alliance, because like. You know, that for making making a game is one way more difficult than making a movie in terms of the time it takes and updates and like how long it takes to develop characters and stories and how long it takes to develop gameplay and all this shit. But then also like these are wildly different teams under different publishers and try, trying to foster that communication between all that just doesn't make sense. You know, on Activision Call of Duty side, it's probably more easier because they're in they're under the same publisher. But still, like that is Call of Duty is a huge ship. And when you're talking about three different different developers making three different Call of Duty games at any given time, those are three huge ships to move. Uh, uh, on Vanguard like a isn't even basis. out. <laughs> you know, like Vanguard isn't even out, and we're already talking about the next Call of Duty that's going to come out a year from now, right? And like, the, all all of those theoretically are going to have to feed into Warzone. And Warzone, I mean, I've not been paying too much attention because I got my own battle royales that I'm worrying about. I'm over here playing Apex Legends, and every now and then a Fortnite. But like, I imagine that for them. God damn. Warzone is probably Warzone is probably a, a struggle in terms of trying to actually implement those uh, yearly. Hey, how do we? What is the Black Ops thing that we're doing this year? What is the Vanguard thing that we're doing this year? All right, next year is Modern Warfare Two. How do we? How do we move this ship in a way that makes sense for applying it to all these different games across three different studios when the core of this game is rooted in Modern Warfare? Like. There's probably so much to figure out there that I it it is probably for them way harder than it is a Fortnite, which for them everything is just Fortnite, right? Like we're able to reach out to Marvel oh, yeah. and Carnage. We're able to do whatever whatever we want because we're Fortnite and also like we make the engine, right? Like we're epic games, we know how right. to do this shit. Um for it's Call also of Duty, bizarre. it's not as easy. It's also bizarre just seeing the divide between the players where when the rumors were that the newer version of Warzone was going to operate on the Black Ops engine. People were not excited about that. The Black Ops Cold War engine is kind of widely not liked by a lot of the player base. They prefer the Modern Warfare engine. Mm. And the fact that you have two games in your franchise and you go play Black Ops Cold War to maybe level up guns. Maybe you level up the Cold War guns in Black Ops Cold War on an engine that you maybe necessarily don't love. And then those guns are also available in Warzone in a different engine and you come play the battle royale that you probably prefer to play because you're only in black ops cold like there's just a yeah. lot of moving parts and um it, 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 we'll see if they ever kind of get on the same page in a way that seems quick and efficient but for the time being i feel like it's still going to be a pain when you see there's a bug in fortnite and that shit gets squashed pretty quickly if there's an issue in apex i get squashed pretty quickly in valorant goddamn the amount of times it you see a bug pop up in Valorant and it is gone the next day. And it's so stunning yeah. how quickly they work. And Warzone, for whatever reason, just takes so long to fix really big key issues. Yeah. yeah uh, it's but that, we'll it's s- those moving ships. Like they're just it, such a big thing yeah. to handle, right? Like between Warzone and then other Call of Duty games and having to have, have those communicate with each other. Like it, 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 it makes sense when you break it down of why that's the case. But again, like, you know, for what for what we're talking about here of why you wouldn't see a blackout um in the next Call of Duty Black Ops, right? And why they would just st- stick to Warzone. It makes sense when you see the numbers and it makes sense when you look at the business strategy of it. But that we getting Bobby Kodak mean... out of office or what? What are we doing? Are we working what, are, on that? what are we doing, right? Like are we working what are on we that? Doing that. Yeah. We'll have to wait and see on that. But Andy, for now, let's talk about another big FPS with Battlefield 2042. Story number four, Battlefield 2042 could get delayed this is andy robinson once again at vgc this is a big vgc episode because they were putting out they were churning out articles great job uh, in, the andy last, in the last 24 hours great job andy robinson and chris schoolian my tokayo tokayo is like a, a spanish word for like you have the same name as me bless oh my tokayo. That's cool. yeah that's cool mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Various industry insiders have suggested that Battlefield 2042 could be set for a surprise delay. Journalist Jeff Grubb first wrote on social media on Tuesday that a singular delay for an unnamed title would be announced this week. 
Prominent YouTube dealer or YouTuber dealer and Xbox era journalist. Oh, let us say that again. Prominent YouTuber dealer and Xbox era journalist Nick Baker have both uh, since claimed that the title Grub is referring to is EA's Battlefield 2042. According to a reliable Battlefield insider, Tom Henderson, discussion around a delay for 2042 is currently unfolding internal, internally at EA and could be could be for weeks and not months. He tweeted on Wednesday, quote, Battlefield 2042 is to be delayed by several weeks and not months, which conflicts with other rumors, but it's what I've heard. Late November 2021 is currently flying around, end quote. Another journalist, Roberto Serrano, notes that the Italian branch of GameStop has changed Battlefield's release date to a generic 12 slash 31 slash 21. That is December 31st, 2021. I mean... Makes sense when it when given like pandemic has fucked uh, a lot of game development, you know, in terms of the process and all that stuff. Like any game delay is not really a surprise nowadays. I uh, the thing that worries me about weak delays is I know a lot of developers hate weak delays because you it, it doesn't really give you a whole lot of confidence when a game is delayed by a couple of weeks, in my opinion. Like that, if they were to do months of delay, then I would have sort of the I don't know. I would just know that they are taking whatever they're taking their time on fixing these bugs instead of crunching. And we've read reports uh, from Schreier in the past of whenever there's been a delay for a couple of weeks that that means for those couple of weeks, they're going to be fucking crunching hard mm. to fix those problems. And I what can you really fix in a couple of weeks that. You know, you, you, it, it's hard to kind of convey what I'm saying, but like if you have two weeks to delay a game. Are we talking about bugs? Are we talking about some distribution, some distribution problems? Or is it just like there's nothing you can't you can fix in two weeks that you wouldn't be OK with shipping out the day of the original release date? Like if there are problems there, you're going to need more than just a couple of weeks. So that's the thing that kind of worries me there. The thing that I find I wish it didn't take me 90 this. words to say what I what I could have said. In oh, you made, I mean, you made it clear. You, you, you said exactly. You made you made your point. Well, the thing I do want to point out, though, with this is this puts this game now in Halo Infinite territory because Halo Infinite is coming out early December, right? Like first, maybe second week of December. Kind of slash you're wrong. I think it's December 8th, but I might be wrong about that. That's just off the top of the dome. Uh, this game coming out late November puts those games within kind of the same sphere right it's not like dire by any means right like ha having a weak buffer between those games it's still a decent enough time for it not to be like oh shit i'm at the store and i gotta choose one or the other but for what the for for the 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 impending i guess fps battle that we're getting this fall between call of duty battlefield halo and the like you know throw split gate in there what if um, he, what if ea was like you know we're delaying it just because we want to fight against halo <laughs> <I'll> <laughs> he just that. came out and said it <laughs> it's like it's like that one this is a reference for two people but it's like in 2013 when j cole is like i'm gonna delay my album so i can compete against jesus because he wanted to release the same day as kanye Damn, that was a big thing that's yeah, crazy you know big dick energy right you i remember listening to Kanye jesus West. in my car on the drive from austin back home to the Rio Grande valley and i was like not for me not for me yeah yeah well i mean like we we didn't get the halo infinite release date for the longest time we just got it and theoretically you know the things we've been talking about is are they are they seeing the lay of the land are they trying to see when the other big first person shooters are going to land are they trying to see where call of duty is going to be dated and all in all these things now that now they're butting up against each other in a way that I think is interesting, and I'm I'm like I don't think it's it's dire for either either of these games. Like it's Battlefield and it's Halo, right? But you know I think it's gonna be a fun one in terms of seeing like what the audience gravitates to, and especially especially us, right? Where I know for us here, kind of funny, all of us have plans for the most part to check out Battlefield and also check out Halo Infinite, and I would imagine that more of the hype is on the side of Halo Infinite here at Kind of Funny. But I do wonder how that pans out if we pick up battlefield 2042 and we're like fuck this is really fun this is like I, a re this is the best battlefield has been in years i think that the audiences there are dedicated enough to kind of stick with to their guns and stick on the side that they uh that they are you know whatever their fandom is they're going to go ahead and go with that game they i discovered pretty early in my first few games of battlefield 4 that man i don't know if i love the gameplay of this but i'm still excited for 2042 um, I just the amount of time is blessed that I'm just I spawn and I get shot from a plant 90 yards away. I'm like, I didn't even 
this isn't fun for me right now. <laughs> I just keep getting destroyed by by dudes who obviously play the game way more than me. So um, I don't fully have the rhythm down for Battlefield to, uh, 4 at that point. And hopefully a 2042 is a nice little breaking off point. We can start fresh there. Mm. But I still want to see some buildings fall down, but way more stoked for Halo. Story number five, Andy. This is an exciting one. Pulse 3D wireless headset in Midnight Black launches next month. I'm pulling directly from the PlayStation blog. And Kevin, I have a link under the news story in the doc to the trailer that they put on the on the PlayStation YouTube channel. Because this thing looks sexy. It looks really slick. Building upon the new Galaxy theme colors we introduced for DualSense wireless controllers in June, I am pleased to share that the Pulse 3D headset is also getting a new color, Midnight Black. This new look for the Pulse 3D headset will match the same color scheme as the DualSense Midnight Black wireless controller with two subtly different shades of black. The Pulse 3D headset in Midnight Black will begin rolling out globally at participating retailers next month. And I'm all about this thing. Kevin is showing it on the screen right now. I love my 3D Pulse headset. It's what I use pretty much 98% of the time when I'm playing it's amazing, my PS5. Isn't it? It's so good. It's so comfortable. Like, especially mm-hmm. for me, I wear glasses, obviously. And like so, so many headphones uh are I, it, so many headphones to wear are kind of a struggle with glasses like i wear my mm-hmm. beats headphones all the time i have two different pairs of beats right between the one i'm wearing right now and then like also have my wireless ones between those two they squeeze on my head to the point mm-hmm. where it makes my glasses uncomfortable because my glasses are kind of like jamming into the sides mm-hmm. of my head yeah as over the head headphones go the pulse 3 3d wireless headphones are so good about that they're so um uh easy to wear but then also just the functionality of them and how good they go with the PS5 and how easy easy to make your life. I love them so much. I sound like I'm a salesperson right now, but I'm speaking from the heart. I this love is, these things. This is something I didn't see coming at all. I, I did not see different color variations for a headset. Controllers are something I totally understand. Just, but also, Sony, back off with the Galaxy themed. It's not Galaxy themed. It's, it's fucking black. And the controller was red. <laughs> like... Those aren't that's like we need stars. We need purple. I need blue to green to teal and aqua, uh, you know, controllers with awesome color schemes and little speckles. And like you making the controller red, which, by the way, my least favorite color red. Bless. I have it around what? here somewhere. I know you do, too. I fucking hate this red controller. Oh, I, I love this guy. I hate the it. Crimson I, red. I hate this fucking red crimson, controller. Man. The, the yeah, Xbox but, red you know, controller is so much more red. red. This thing has so much more hues of pink yeah, in there than the I want. Controller. I want it. Ju- I mean, just give me a pink controller if you're, if you're going to like hint towards pink. If you're going to make it red, make it fire red like the Xbox one. I love to this me, guy. The most red shocking. is my favorite color, though. And maroon was my uh, high school colors. And so like, I have a good connection with this specific brand of red. It's just a link. To, at something. to me, the, like, the most shocking thing is like, what? where are like, why have they not made a store? So they can sell us goddamn uh, the, the design lab. No, the the mm. like covers of the PlayStation Five. Oh, I don't the want plates. The white one. Just sell me a black plate. Just sell me a black plate. Yeah, dude, you could sell that shit for a hundred and fifty bucks. Yeah, and that and shit I'll would sell it. like crazy. Yeah, I mean it's it's WPDs, right? Weird PlayStation decisions. Because mm. why oh, don't, don't we do have? This. Don't do why, this. Why, we we got to be on. Like, Nintendo is the weirdest company out of the big three between Xbox, PlayStation, and, and, and Nintendo. Nintendo is the weirdest. PlayStation does make some weird decisions, right? Mm-hmm. Like PlayStation is out here being like, no, we're going to give you only a few colors of these controllers over the course of however long. And it's not going to be until year four where they're finally like, what if we just sold plates? And calling Everybody's it been Galaxy telling us to sell themed. plates. What if we just did it? Galaxy themed. That's a weird thing. It's not Galaxy themed. Sorry. Also, can uh, I get a crimson? I know I'm going to say we're all thinking. Why don't we get a crimson red Pulse headset? How about you make hey, the thing on, red? Come on, let's do it. Let me match my headset and my controller, damn it. I mean, that'll probably happen, honestly. Oh, I want it so bad. But I bet you, oh, hold on, but I bet you, if we looked at sales for the black controller to the crimson controller, yeah. it, it there's a wide divide there. Yep, the amount of times sure. that we would make merch at Kind of Funny, it's like, here's a black shirt, sells gangbusters. Here's a teal shirt. Doesn't it fucking sells oh, like yeah. a fifth of the amount? You know? like, <laughs> God, come on, that's teal though. Who wants to wear a teal shirt? Whoa! I'll say it again. This is the episode where I'm saying what we're all thinking. All right, oh. who wants to wear a teal shirt? It's either black or it's heather gray. I'm with Nick Scarpino on the heather gray train. Heather gray is a great uh, color for a shirt. Oh. It's those two because they go with everything. You don't have to worry about matching. Andy, are you okay? Are you okay, Andy? I mean, my favorite. Well, I guess this isn't necessarily teal, but like one of my favorite hoodies. Is this bright ass 
hoodie. Like, it's not necessarily teal. It's more of like an aquamarine. Mm -hmm. But like, bless, I, I don't, I don't like the vibes you're bringing right now. So maybe just, maybe just step back a bit. You know, I'll step back. I'll roll. I mean, I mean, I'm in a rolling chair, so I'll roll back just a couple inches. I'll roll Thank back. you, I'll roll Tam, back. who says, "Where is the two one purple black controller that looks like a DualShock 2? I give me a purple controller. Oh, that's, that would be that has to be coming. Way cooler. Could you than... imagine? Fucking ugh, this thing in purple. Keep the black. It, like, it would be so here, much cooler, dude. We'll get it. It'll be like year three or four before we'll get it. But we'll get it. We'll get it. I got, got band-aids all over my face. I'm falling apart right now. We got. And what, what the fuck were you doing? Why do you have so many band-aids on your fingers? So like I get I get a callus on my uh, on my knuckle and the callus like kind of split. Uh, the dry skin like split, you know. And then it started like kind of getting infected. So, uh, new, you know, a little Neosporin or antibiotic, whatever the hell you call it, Band-Aid. And then on this finger, I pulled another little cuticle and then it started uh, getting. I hate the cuticles, man. Uh, Those will get you. This is a mess. I'm a mess right now. Andy, do you what? know what else I'm excited to get? Hmm. Anthony Mackie in Twisted Metal. That's right. Story number six, our, la our last news story for the day. Anthony Mackie is to star as John Doe in the live-action Twisted Metal. This is Justin Kroll at Deadline. <clears throat> After recently being named the next Captain America, Anthony Mackie looks to have found his next juicy role to sink his teeth into. Sources tell Deadline that Mackie is set to star in and executive produce Sony Picture Pictures Television and PlayStation Productions' Twisted Metal, a live-action adaptation of the popular video game. Mackie will play the lead role of John Doe in the half-hour live-action TV series, and insiders say that Sony TV and PlayStation Productions are extremely high on the package, and a plan is in the works to take it to buyers soon. Quote, we're thrilled to have Anthony Mackie on board. His ability to blend comedy, action, and drama is perfect for the twisted, twisted world we're creating, said Asad Kizilbash, head of PlayStation Studios. Twisted Metal is a high-octane action comedy based on an original take by Deadpool scribes Rhett Reese and Paul Wernick about a motormouthed outsider offered a chance at a better life, but only if he can successfully deliver a mysterious package across a post-apocalyptic wasteland. With the help of a trigger-happy car thief, he'll face savage marauders, driving vehicles of destruction, and other dangers of the open road, including a deranged clown who drives an all-too-familiar ice cream truck. Doe is a smart-ass milkman who talks as fast as he drives. With no memory of his past, he gets a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to make his wish of finding community come, come true, but only if he can survive an onslaught of savage vehicular combat. That Andy, sounds fucking terrible. This sounds fucking amazing. I, <laughs> I want cannot this, wait for this shit. I want this less than I want a Twisted Metal remake video game. Like, I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit, Bless. What are <laughs> your is, thoughts? This sold me. I wasn't, I wasn't, th the whole time leading up to this, I've been like, why, why the fuck would I want a Twisted Metal TV show? I have finally been sold. Are you kidding me? Anthony Mackie with his devious ass smile. <laughs> they, Anthony Mackie always looks like, like he's up to no good whenever you see him smiling. Those are some great memes. That was, has, that was a great time. <laughs> he has such a devious ass smile. And I can't wait to see Anthony Mackie take the lead role in a Twisted Metal movie. That sounds like it's going to be a combination of Mad Max. 30 minutes or less and zombie land it but, sounds like a mixture between all three of those with anthony mackie to star in it and it's gonna be fucking dumb and i can't wait to watch it i have never i've never loved anthony mackie and i i fail to see how i'm gonna love him in this role where like i i, I just don't see him as this character that they're trying to, to push him as um, I think there's a lot of other actors you could have gone for that could have been. You don't think the... he's you, just, you don't think he'd be a great milkman? <laughs> no, it's it's. <laughs> yeah, like, he's not he's not trying to be Walter White out yeah, here. Yeah, that's holding me back, bless. It's the milkman. <laughs> that's holding me back. No, it's the the fast acting, like funny, quirky dude. Like I just don't really see him. At, I see him more as more as like a stoic dude. But again, maybe that's what? just typecasting him as as Falcon, you know. And like again, he talks shit to Bucky every once in a while, but like. I I tolerate it. I've never mm -hmm. loved that side of Anthony Mackey. Um, but God damn, like I don't need a Twisted Metal show. I don't need a Twisted Metal game. Why is this franchise coming back with such ferocity? Like <laughs> from where? From where, bless? Where have the people been clamoring for a new Twisted Metal anything? Why is this happening now? Like did I mean, you're video game... Did the TV people suddenly go, oh, shit, they're going to make a remake? Well, we got to do a TV show. Like, it, 
you got to have a demand for one of the things first. I'm I'm more into the TV show than the idea of the of bringing back the video game franchise and basing it on possibly basing it on a TV show or having it have some some kind of synergy. Mainly because I think the premise sounds dumb enough to where this strikes me as like a we're gonna watch a season of this go. Oh, that was dumb, but it was fun though, and then move on from it. I don't expect. I don't expect excellence from this, but I expect it to be like a fine, fun watch, especially with Anthony Mackie being the dude. Because I think, I think Anthony Mackie has the stuff in him. I I agree to you, agree with you to to an, an extent where I don't think he's truly shined in terms of his comedic chops as Falcon, right? Like Falcon is like he's he has his funny moments, but he's not like he's not Robert Downey Jr., right? Like he's not like that dude when it comes to you. oh man, it, Falcon is the funniest character in the MCU. He doesn't have that yet, but Funny I feel enough, like, like when I see when I see Anthony Mackie interviews and Anthony Mackie, that's just, exactly is, what I was gonna it, say. Yep, it is natural Anthony Mackie state. He's really funny. Like yeah. he's a really funny dude that I think does have the stuff, but I don't think he's been given the opportunity f- for it yet. You and I are definitely all up in Marvel TikTok because whenever it's an yeah. interview and he's sh- and he's shitting on Tom Holland and making fun of him and kind of just being sarcastic and deadpan about it, I love that part of him. And I I, I guess when I see that, that's more of the role that I prefer him to play and be this sort of fast talking shit talking dude um and some people in chat are like andy twisted metal is great like i'm not saying twisted metal wasn't a great game it was never a game that i loved i know a lot of people like it i'm not saying it's a bad game it's just like what old old game is old and that game comes out today and you're going to play that shit for four days and never look back and that's sort of the discussion that we had on ps i love you where i'm like if this game comes back, you're you'll play this for a week max. You know, like mm-hmm. sorry, that's just it's a game that you think you love because you played it as a kid, and I think if it comes back, you're not really gonna care about it a whole lot anymore. Andy, I can't wait to see what the, what the reception is to this Twisted Metal TV show, and to see like the, when this game comes out and how it does and all that stuff. But all that is just so far away. If I wanted what's coming out to Mom and Grab shops today, where would I look? The official list of upcoming software across each and every platform as listed by the kind of funny games daily show hosts each and every weekday. Out today, we got Story of Seasons, Pioneers of Olive Town for PC, Fire Commander for PS5, PS4, Xbox Series X slash S, Xbox One and PC, Merrick's Market for PS4, Xbox One and PC, Flynn, Son of Crimson for PS4, Xbox One, Switch and PC, Cat Lateral Damage Remeowstered for PS5, PS4, <laughs> Xbox Series X slash S, Xbox One, Switch and PC, Dustwind, The Last Resort for PS5, PS4, Xbox Series X, uh, Xbox One, Mr. Pumpkin 2, Kowloon Walled City for Xbox One, uh, Titan Chaser for PS4, Xbox One, and Switch, Omen of Sorrow for Xbox One, Arkin the Dog Adventurer for Xbox Series X, Between Time Escape Room for Switch, Mind Cell for Switch, Timberborn PC for PC and Mac, uh, Age of Darkness Final Stand for PC, Gas Station Simulator for PC. Jesus, they're making simulators for everything. They've really done it. They made a gas station simulator. Good for them. And then Summoner's War has released a brand new 2v2 battle mode for flagship title Summoner's War Sky Arena. New dates for you. Good Night is coming to Steam September 17th. Lords and Villains uh, is coming in early access uh, to Steam, GOG, Epic Games, and other digital stores starting Thursday, September 30th. And then Festival Tycoon uh, comes to Steam September 27th. Remember, you can go to patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames where you can get the show ad-free. You can write in, with, write in with your questions, but you can also write in with your squad ups just like Stove did. Stove writes in and says, howdy, best friends. You might remember me as the guy who sent in a potential theme song for Wild Aces and then forgot to check Twitter for half a year. Electric <laughs> stove sorry about that greg (laughs) regardless i somehow snagged myself a ps5 after months of trying and now i need some friends to hang out with and try to kill me in death loop while i stream on twitch also known as bird cultured kill his ass kill his ass make me look like a playstation amateur you cowards jk love you all stove if you want to add stove and kill him in death loop you can add him with the psn username bird cultured he's playing on ps5 he's playing at death loop go in invade him have a good time now it's time for kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong. That's where you write in. Let us know what we got wrong as we got it wrong so we can correct it for those watching later on youtube.com slash games and on podcast services around the globe. Uh, let's see. Nato's writing in with some tips about breakfast in the morning, which I appreciate. Not that you're wrong, so I'm not going to read it, 
That's appreciated. But I appreciate it. I'll, Man, I'll if I, did, if I wasn't playing a million board? games, I would play Flint and Son of Crimson today. Damn, too many games. Uh, nothing mind blowing, really. Because Tim here. suffers from that same issue. Can't eat breakfast. I know quite a few people. Like I've seen enough people say it that I know I'm not. I know I'm not alone, and I know that it's a common thing. But I want to know what causes it, and I want to know if I can remedy it somehow. I know f- fruits and vegetables help a bit more like i can eat a banana in the morning but if i'm eating anything that's like bread or a sausage burrito or anything that is actual food food then it's way more difficult for me and also like a banana doesn't fill me up in the way that i'm looking forward to you know out of a sure early morning snack like i want something that's going to add a base that way a base to my stomach you know what i mean like if i eat a banana i'm still going to have like the oh, i'm hungry feeling in the middle of a show and i don't want that i don't want that uh, the nanobiologist writes in and says Halo Infinite is December 8th with free multiplayer on the same day. Thank you for that. Mm-mm-mm, and that is not a you're wrong. So we killed it, Andy. For the good most part, job. we killed it. I think both of these were for me. And so good job, Andy. Uh, so I was right about Twisted Mill. Nice. Yeah, no, everybody thought you're. I saw nobody in chat disagree <laughs> yeah, with you. Yeah. I think you're, you're correct. Absolutely correct about Twisted Mill. Nobody wants it. Tomorrow's host for Kind of Funny Games Daily are Tamor and Tim. That's right, you're getting a Tim Tam Thursday. If you're watching this live on Twitch right now, after this is an Amazon Luna-sponsored stream featuring Greg, Snowbike, Mike, and myself. If you want to catch that stream later, subscribe to youtube.com slash kindoffunnyplays. Remember, this has been Kind of Funny Games Daily. Each and every weekday live right here on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames. We run you through the nerdy news you need to know about. We have a Patreon post show for those that are subbed at the silver level of patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames, so stick around for that. Otherwise, until next time, game daily.